Hello from the National Library of Ireland. I'd much rather be talking to you today in person, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Sharon and Michael for organising this conference. It's great to see it going ahead online after so much work had been put in. I'm going to talk to you today about web archiving in the Irish context. I'm going to introduce you to the National Library of Ireland and tell you how our web archiving programme has developed over the past decade. Some of you will be familiar with our beautiful building in the centre of Dublin. Located beside Dáil Éireann, the National Museum of Ireland, the National Gallery and Trinity College, it is at the heart of cultural Dublin. The National Library is the Library of Record for Ireland. Established in 1877, our mission is to collect, protect and share the material that comprises Ireland's literary and documentary heritage in whatever form it takes. We collect on behalf of the people of Ireland and we have a mandate to make this material as accessible as possible. In 1927, we became a legal deposit library for Ireland. We are the office of the Chief Herald and also the home of the Irish National Photographic Archive. The NLI has about 87 full-time equivalent staff with an annual budget of 7.8 million euro. We are led by our established collecting history but also by our 2016-2021 strategy and other policies like our collection development policy and our diversity and inclusion strategy. For those of you who have not visited Dublin City, we are spread out over four buildings. Here is our iconic reading room in our main building on Kildare Street. Most recently, we have added our Seamus Heaney exhibition and a partnership with University College Dublin, the Museum of Literature Ireland. Our buildings and services reopened in June and we are welcoming researchers and visitors to our exhibitions and reading rooms in a carefully controlled way. The NLI has four primary collecting areas, printed, special collections, visual and digital. These are the four collecting strands of the National Library of Ireland and we work together with our conservation our development, our education, learning and programming and our estates department to fulfil our mandate. Digital Collections is a relatively new department. Formed in 2015, we are a mix of IT professionals, librarians and archivists. We are responsible for digitisation, the web archive, born digital collecting, digital preservation and also the IT infrastructure for the library. We are a small team, but we work together to achieve our goals. And we are lucky to have the support and knowledge of such an interdisciplinary team. Since this webinar is open to everyone and it forms part of the Dublin Festival of History, I thought I'd give a quick definition of web archiving from the International Internet Preservation Consortium of which we are proud members. Web archiving is the process of collecting portions of the World Wide Web, preserving them and then serving them for access and use. Web archiving ensures the preservation of this material for future research and study. One of the questions I'm asked the most is why does the NLI archive the web? We see the web archive as a continuation of our collecting strategies a necessary activity to achieve our mission in the 21st century. 100 years ago, Ireland was fighting for independence from Britain. And in 1922, a new state was formed that would eventually become the Irish Republic. As you can imagine, there are new books, articles, podcasts and TV programmes being produced. What if the National Library of Ireland had failed to collect this period? What if our librarian in 1916, James Lister, hadn't written to the Assistant Undersecretary of Ireland looking for copies of the 1916 proclamation? And what if we hadn't collected the following period? When people ask why the NLI collects the web, I answer so that in 50 or 100 years, Irish people 
will have a record of society, culture and political life in Ireland. So I'm going to take you back to 2011. My colleague Della Keating began collecting the online record of the general and presidential elections of that year. And following this successful pilot, pilot project, the NLI Web Archive was formally established. From 2012 to 2016, the NLI Web Archive continued to develop. Some collections from this period included blogs, cultural websites, the Irish diaspora, and political collections including referendums, local elections and political movements in Ireland. In 2016, the first full-time resource was appointed to the Web Archive. The 2016 Web Archivist would exclusively work on the Remembering 1916 Recording 2016 project, which aimed to record the Easter Rising commemorations and the Irish experience of the First World War. This project involved the archiving of over 450 websites relating to the commemorations and is the largest collection in the Web Archive to date. In 2017, a permanent resource was assigned to the Web Archive and since then we have focused on developing, growing and promoting the National Web Archive. It has been almost a decade of seismic change in Irish life. We have gone from boom to bust to international pandemic and bust again. We have seen governments formed and fall, hysteric referenda and political scandals, and through it all, the NLI Web Archive has captured the Irish life online. It would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that in 2007 and in 2017, a domain crawl of the Irish web was carried out. These amount to over 40 terabytes of data, data that is unique and data that will be invaluable both now and in the future. However, due to the lack of appropriate illegal deposit legislation in Ireland, we cannot make it available to the public or to researchers. The library have been working continuously and tirelessly, I might add, for the last nine years with the National Library's board, the relevant government departments and others exploring options to change the legislation so that we can preserve the .ie domain. But unfortunately, until the legislation is changed, we cannot make our existing crawls available, nor can we carry out any further domain crawls of the Irish domain. Selectively archiving websites means that we have to make difficult decisions about what we collect. First and foremost, we cannot collect everything, nor would we want everything. We try to get a wide representation of Irish life, and the National Library of Ireland have a number of policies in place to help us fulfil this remit. Our collection development policy and our diversity and inclusion policy are there to help us collect and develop our collections. When we have identified a website we wish to archive, we notify the owner of our intention to carry out web archiving. At this point, they have the option to opt out of the web archive if they so wish. Some of the initial questions we ask when scoping a collection are, is the website at risk of being deleted or substantially changed? Does it fit with our collection development policy? Is it Irish or of Irish interest? Does it help tell the story of Ireland in the 21st century? And then, can the website be archived? Are there any technical restrictions that might hinder us archiving it? Another consideration that we have is can we tell who owns the website? We are required to notify the owners of a website of our intention to archive the site. So if the website has no email address or no way to contact the owners, we cannot archive it. This generally isn't a problem, but it has been around elections or controversial topics. But it is worth pointing out here that in the lifetime of the National Library's web archive, we have had very, very few uh, who have chosen to opt out. So here are some of the topics we collect. Politics, social issues such as trade union action, the housing crisis, cultural and creative events such as commemorations, design and literature. We also work with government departments to archive websites as they are redesigned or changed. Government departments in the past had standalone websites 
but are now being migrated to one central domain. And we are working closely with the government to archive these at the point that they change over. All these can be explored through the web archive from the National Library's website. We have an extensive collection of websites dating back to 2011, many of which are no longer available through the web. And what I will touch on now is really a fraction of what is in the web archive. Before I look at some of our collections, I want to examine some of the areas we have to consider when carrying out web archiving. A website is a published item, in the same way a book is published. But in our experience, many people do not assume that their website is a publication and therefore would not have an expectation for it to be archived. This is something we need to be mindful of. In the National Library of Ireland, we notify owners of websites and they can opt out if they do not wish to be included in the web archive. We frequently get asked about collecting controversial material and we strive to collect material from all different viewpoints in every collection that we do. So in a referendum or an election, we collect different viewpoints surrounding the debate. The Eighth Amendment collection would be an example of this, where we considered all aspects of the campaign. So how do we mitigate these concerns? Well, first of all, we have a very clear collections development policy, which guides our selective decisions. Our CDP is available on our website, but is currently being reviewed and updated. We also have a diversity and inclusion policy, which I'll discuss in more detail in just a minute. And furthermore, we have a takedown policy. So if we archive your website and you have genuine concerns at any point, we can remove it from the live web. We also seek to consult academics and subject specialists around issues such as elections and referendums. And we also seek nominations from the general public on topics such as COVID-19. Web archiving is a developing field and we are facing new issues all of the time. The key to mitigating some of these questions is collaboration and transparency. And in the NLI, we document our selection decisions, in particular around elections and referendums, and we make these available through our website. This outlines our decisions and thinking behind the selection of material, and it is something that we are committed to continuing. Conversations about diversity and racism are happening in all sectors, including libraries and archives at the moment. In 2018, the NLI became the first cultural institution in Ireland to introduce a diversity and inclusion policy. A staff committee was formed to oversee the production and implementation of the policy, and in 2019, we held a consultative morning with representatives from different communities to get a sense of what was important to them and what they would like to see in the National Library. Determined to be more than a tokenistic policy, the NLI committee put forward concrete steps to becoming more diverse. These range from commitments about diversifying our collections, promoting a more diverse workforce, and improving the physical access to buildings and services. It also included a number of steps for the web archive, including working on collaborative projects and actively working with communities to build web archives. This is something I feel personally very strongly about. When we look to document communities like, for example, the LGBTI plus community or the traveller community in Ireland, we must collaborate with them. We must recognise our privilege when trying to build a reflective and inclusive web archive. We often use the mantra, nothing about us without us. And this is something we are particularly dedicated to in the National Library. A number of approaches have been made to various communities to build more reflective web archive collections. And we hope to bring these to fruition as soon as possible. Turning now, I just want to highlight some of our collections. A lot of our collections are Irish focused, obviously, but we do seek to reflect international events in our web archive. And Brexit is the gift that keeps on giving. Started in 2016, in what we hoped would be a one-off collection, 
has now turned into an, on, an ongoing event-based collection for us. Far be, from being finished, the Brexit collection encompasses the Irish government's response to Brexit and that of the education sector, trade and industry sectors. And we also seek to represent the border community in this collection who have been so greatly affected by Brexit. This collection will likely continue as long as Brexit rumbles on. We put a particular emphasis on collecting new websites, in particular those who publish in an online only format. These type of websites will be collected on a regular basis. Part of our remit in the National Library of Ireland is to collect Irish language publications and therefore we collect Tórisk on a regular basis. Tórisk, seen here, is an Irish language online only publication. Politics isn't the only thing we archive in the National Library of Ireland. We also look at society and culture. We have a long-standing tradition in the web archive of collecting websites around issues such as health, climate change, homelessness, and other issues such as addiction, older people, and rural isolation, to name just a few. We also actively collect on Irish culture. And if we look at sports, last year we collected GA websites from all over Ireland including the Ladies Gaelic Football Association and Camogie websites. The websites of all cultural and higher education institutes are archived on an annual basis. And in addition, as I've already said, we have a strong remit to collect Irish language websites. And we work with the Irish language group in the NLI to archive websites. These cultural and social collections are critically important if we want to give a full view of Irish life in the 21st century. Moving on to the collection that has been consuming us for a number of months now. The National Library of Ireland has been actively collecting Ireland's response to COVID-19 since before the lockdown. The library closed its doors on the 12th of March and remote working was put in place. Here's the beautiful view from my office during lockdown. The NLI Web Archive continued to collect the online response from early April. We collected a weekly set of websites and they included the government website, the Health Service Executive, the website of the Health Protection Surveillance Centre and a number of online news sites including Tourisk, The Journal and RTE News. We also began identifying websites from various different sectors, including health, industry, education and innovation. These range from political, economic and news websites, representing everyone from retailers, hoteliers and hairdressers. Many of my colleagues in national libraries around the world and the IIPC are archiving the response to this pandemic online. We will continue to do so for as long as the virus continues to disrupt our normal lives. We know that this collection will be vital to researchers in the future. Our COVID-19 collection is available from our web archive portal on the NLI's website. It is updated regularly as new sites are archived. For us in the National Library of Ireland, COVID-19 has reinforced the importance of having a domain crawl highlighting the loss we are experiencing by not being able to carry out one this year. We very much wish that we could carry out a domain crawl to supplement our thematic and openly available crawls and ensure this period, unprecedented in living memory in Ireland, will be preserved for future research. And moving on to research now, online life is intertwined with the 21st century. You couldn't possibly study this period without the web. And the fragility of the digital web needs to be highlighted. It will be impossible to study the 21st century without the web. And unlike paper, which is relatively stable and long lasting, the web experiences loss every second of the day. Therefore, it is vital that we record this period by carrying out web archiving. It, as many of my colleagues will testify, may not be recognised as important as, say, a 100-year-old manuscript now, but it will be vital to future research. 
In order to fulfill our mandate for future generations, we must carry out web archiving now. And it's not just for historians looking to study this period in five, 10 or 20 years time. It's for educators, journalists, for genealogists, data analysts and amateur researchers now. In recent years, we have an increased interest from computer and political scientists looking to use our data in new and interesting ways. We have been working with Dr. Derek Green from the School of Computer Science in University College Dublin. Dr. Green has carried out network analysis on our web archive, and I know he's going to talk to you about this further later in the conference, so I'd highly recommend tuning in. This is something other national libraries worldwide carry out, and it is also something we would like to do more of, making our data as open as possible. I'm sure new research opportunities will continue to emerge in the coming years. The important thing for us at the National Library of Ireland that we have this data to enable research in whatever form it takes. That's all from me. Please do get in touch if you have any questions at all. And thank you again for this opportunity to talk about the National Library of Ireland and I look forward to the rest of the conference.